What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna be continuing the project, the big room project that I started in the previous video. And so today we're gonna be focusing on the breakdown. In the previous video we did some drop ideas. So I'm gonna be working on like a hands up chord type of break. I want kind of some claps. I want some chord ideas, saw chords. Uh, something simple, but something that's kind of hands up, effective, has some energy in it. So let's jump right into it. I've made a new pattern called chord and I added another instance of massive. So we're going to go to new sound and uh, we're working in the key of F, I believe. Yep. So we're going to get started. We're just going to make some notes, make something with the MIDI and then uh, take over the sound design. I like to work on the bass notes first sometimes because they can give me the direction I want to go da 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 and then you can build on top of it. Whatever works for you. It's very easy to start with one note instead of trying to do a whole chord at once. That's why I don't really like using chord assistant tools because I like to say what it's doing, where it's going, even if it's not necessarily correct. So that's cool. We have like a F minor type of uh, chord. Very simple, but I think I might make a variation of this. So we'll make it eight bars long. I like this feeling. It kind of reminds me of like a little fight club energy vibe. I think I might go bum 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 something like that. Get creative. Feel free to hum the melodies as you see fit. So I'm gonna copy paste. Not as long as I like. It's gonna make that shorter. Leaving that low longer because I might want to go down and pitch ear kind of like that. It kind of gives a nice connection to the next chord, the next bar. So that works perfectly. Oh, nice. I'm liking this. I'm going to keep it simple because we don't want to get too long. Sometimes I like va making variations or 
uh, what Dead Mouse does, go to a note after. Instead of going back to F, I would go to like C sharp because then I can do something weird, dun, 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 like something weird rather than returning. But we're going to keep it simple. So I like this. So we're going to create some tension. You got to create progression. And if there's one thing I'd say that I needed to do more of in the past and I still I pressure myself to do it, it's challenge yourself and make sure you create uh, progressions and evolve your sound over time do like modulation filter modulation volume automation panning keep the listener interested keep them captivated and like energized and keep them motivated and inspired to keep listening to your track let's just mute that effects because we're going to be tweaking this for a bit Let's add some reverb. but I like the cleanliness of it, so I'm going to stick with that. What we're going to do, I'm going to clear this. Massive always has that vibrato there. You don't have to use it. I'm going to automate uh, making an intro knob where I'm going to automate maybe the low pass, and I'm probably going to make the wet a bit bigger so that it starts low pass with a lot of reverb. Um, so we're going to automate that. Uh, with the sound, it's just like some saws, a bit of white noise, a bit of EQ, two voices. I made it polyphonic, spread it out so it's a bit wider. And we're going to add a little sub sine wave bass under that as well when the claps come in. So. is we can customize this macro with two dimensions one being the amount but in case it's too much like it sounds like it's low passing it too much we can just back that off okay and then here we're going to add like a break clap and we're also going to put the sub bass there as well. You can just do this, make unique, rather than making another pattern. And it's good if you want to keep trying out new uh, midis because it'll just clone your pattern. You won't lose the original one. So I'm going to clone massive. I'm going to put a, we're going to assign this to a, its own track. All right, we'll call that break lead. 
and this one is going to get its own track as well. It's going to be called break sub. All right, keeping it simple. Simplicity is so important. Sophistication is good too, but a lot of times the simple things are what are great. So I'm going to go to the sine square all the way to the left, minus 24. Because it's a sub bass, we're going to keep this in mono, monophonic. Uh, I'm going to hit this trigger zero reset, bring the attack, bring the release up a bit. We don't need this. Uh, we'll put the, we'll just put like a, this daft filter again. And let's see. So that's too low. F3 is too low. I'm going to stick with F4. You can customize. You might want to go up instead of C sharp below. But again, it's to your taste because like usually I don't go lower than, than this. But sometimes I do. But as a general rule, like that would be the utmost lowest you'd want to go. Anything lower than that just becomes floppy. Uh, let's give a little bit of a swing to it. By swing, I just mean like a little bit portamento. So you kind of like grooves. Nice. So let's hear. a uh, high cut to the sub bass and you'd wonder well why a high cut it's just a sine wave but there can sometimes be little clicks that we don't want you see this information here so I'm just gonna high pass it around uh, or low cut it low pass around 300 Hertz there's a difference so it does cut out that little click transient you might want that um, for the break lead, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to high pass to make space for the sub bass. 24 dB, I usually like. Sometimes I'm more aggressive, but you have to see what works for you. The more aggressive your curve is, uh, the more surgical and the more artificial, if you will, because it's we're moving more. Um, Kashmir said as well, like for vocals, you know, sometimes you're going to want to do a harsh cut on a vocal if there's a lot of sub bass. But a lot of times those smoother curves, are, they sound more natural. So experiment and find what works for your sound. Uh, we're going to keep the cue at one. So you can see it loses a lot of power after like 130. So we'll just put 125. All right. And uh, we're going to put some break claps. Let's go into the uh, revealed pack. Let's see if actually Ollie James has something. That might work. It's, it's really wide. It's really bright. It might not work, but you know, you got to try it out. So break clap. Um, you don't have to do this all the time. I'm going to make another video on that resample. But what that does is it up mixes it to your mixing frequency. So your sampling rate, I believe 44.1 is what I'm working in. Um, and if you have samples that are maybe like uh, a sample that's above it or lowered, it can make a correction, but just leave that for now, especially if you're just getting into FL, just don't play around with that just yet. <laughs> Too much space for this clap.
just removing a bit of a low frequency in that clap, but I don't want to kill the clap. I don't want to make it too thin. So let's have a listen um, from the drop coming into the. can put a little like a snare uh, like a big room snare pride a snare as kind of like a fill so we'll do that I know Ollie James has one I've used it a lot there we go thing we'll do is we need to uh, tease this a bit more we don't want this like too much of the chord playing and you could either a play those chords the, the MIDI with a different instrument and then smack the chords or you could modulate it more so we're gonna do that we're gonna modulate it more um, we can maybe play around with a few things but before we do that I really want to get this uh, chord under control <laughs> to make um we're gonna repurpose this and just call it like snare build up and i know what you're thinking it sounds like it sounds like crap but you know you i gotta build a structure and we can come back and revitalize those things and add more and that's what my intention is with the drop to is to add more effects layers and things like that We're going to just call this risers because I'm going to combine tons of stuff in here. I'm going to put like, I'm going to make it an eight bar riser and I'm going to put the sub bass in it. All right. And why am I putting the sub bass? I want to automate the sub bass. I want the sub bass to go up one full octave. Let's call that sub, call that break. All right. I didn't really name that one either. It might work pitching this one up, but I feel like it might be cheesy. We'll stick with the sub and do a snare, kind of like a riser kind of thing. So I hit that range to 12 here, pitch bend 12. 
all right right click create automation clip but we're not done right there i'm going to call this riser and i'm going to automate the low shelf i want it just when it kicks in just a bit more after that because i want to add some reverb too even though that sounds crazy because I want the riser to introduce some reverb. I know it sounds insane, like putting reverb on a sub bass, but it might work. It might just work. So I'm going to hit copy value. Go right there. Give it a paste. We're going to go up. And what are we also going to do? We're going to um, automate the riser, which is just kind of turning down the low shelf and adding a bit of reverb too. This is to create some motion, um, to create a bit of like that automation. Cool. Uh, Ollie James has some risers. Um, we're going to see how that sounds. But we do need to bring back the lead. We need to see what can we do with the lead. Do we have any automations here with the lead? I don't think so. Um, it all looks good there. I th massive too. That's our break lead. That's why it's important to uh, name your stuff so you can know, especially when things become hectic. You have 50 tracks, 100 tracks things can get really out of control very fast. So it's important to stay organized. So we're going to bring back the lead, but what we'll do with the lead is uh, we're going to, we're going to like bring it in with like a low pass or something. Um, you know what I'll to, to keep it easy. I suggest all you guys buy this plugin endless smile. I really love it. A for this, for this guy here, but it automates high pass reverb and a couple of things to just push through tension so that way when your lead is playing back you can create a lot of tension so let's give you an example again you can see there if you start with big and then it's coming back like the listeners are expecting something to hit so what I would do is I would, um, I'll probably start with a crazy setting and also low pass it before going into it. I'm going to be using this one. I'm going to be using the one knob by waves. Really, I really like the simplicity of it. It can be used on individual tracks as well as on the mix channel as well. Um, and the nice thing is that it doesn't add any resonance. It doesn't take away anything, doesn't add anything. It's a really good, like transparent low pass filter. So let's hear what this sounds like so I can get an idea how far I want the low pass to be. Probably around 30%. Let's put around 30%. All right. Um, we have to be mindful of our drop because we don't want that being affected there just in this part. We can come up to maybe 50% and then the endless smile, let's like, let's put it around a hundred percent and then we'll wait, we'll work our way down. Because it's an eight bar riser, I'm making it seven bars long and this part for the fill. So because of that, get your pitch automations. This is how I like to do it. I like to make my pitch automations like hit the higher octave there. So what do I mean? I mean, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this instead. Sub riser is going to hit there. This guy's going to kind of come right there. 
and then it needs to come back to the drop okay the lead intensity you know i don't know how much yet is a good amount but i'm going to leave it there and kind of keep it like that but then turn it off because it needs to turn off for the drop right so that's some two cents again i'm hitting that i'm right clicking this to chop off the excess so we got a little structure for some rising now let's bring in the snare drum this will be okay it's not that i would have liked a brighter snare but we can put some reverb or something on it Nice. It's working out good, guys. It's turned out better than I thought. Um, let's listen to the pitch. And again, my tip, pitch it up 1200, a full octave to here. That's not the right pitch. That's the right pitch. So do math, do the reverse. We had to go plus 1100. So that means that what we should go minus 100. Exactly. Now we're in key. And all those small things, if you're in key, you don't always have to be in key. But if you're in key, Things will align better, and in the long run, they will stack up better. Um, again, I'm going to go to this cut self. Let's listen to the snare. Sometimes your snare riser might sound like cool, but you have too much going on. And that's why sometimes with, with hit tracks, radio hits, EDM, electro banger, stuff on like revealed, stuff on quartz or records, like simple snares sometimes work better because some, like sometimes you want to make those like sometimes you want to make a crazy all over the place pattern, but sometimes logically it doesn't work. So listen and see how it works. It's working okay, and uh, I'm gonna add like a pitch automation during these last bars here. Something like that. So go to note, right click, go to note, find pitch, and right there, right click and bring it up. You'll see it at the top left, plus 1200. There we go. Very nice. So now let's bring in that riser, the audio clip. This one has a lot of mid frequency harmonics. So it might not work. I might be better off with just like a white noise. So I'm gonna go into uh, I'm gonna go into the cashmere pack, see if there's like a little sweep or something. Sweep up, long. Perfect. No, uh, it's not long enough. Yeah, that's probably better. All right, so let's listen now. We're gonna cut that off and we'll do something like that. Okay, <clears throat> what we can do is I'm gonna hit Control A, Control C, Control V to copy everything. That didn't work, there we go. Sometimes be careful guys, don't stack like stuff on top of each other. That's happened to me when you put like patterns on top of one another. <laughs> and so just double check by just like seeing if by accident you left that or look in your undo history you can see your undo history at the top where it says current project history in case you made you did something you're like wait did i actually do that so you can see that in your undo history <laughs> working uh let's see what else we can add let's reduce the tension the volume of these risers 
So I'm going to call this like clean risers or just FX risers. All right. We got the snare drum. <laughs> This needs a bit of like, it, you don't want to make your rising stuff too powerful. Oh, that's the wrong. It's okay, let's clean that up too. We'll just do like a simple 120 hertz high pass. I'm not even going to double check that. And let's check the snare drum. You can see it's the energy is really there, the peak. And we're going to add another endless smile. Very nice. Let's add a fill, a short fill. Very cool, guys. The, the couple problems here, A being like we got to check the volume levels. So that will be in like the later videos where we do some uh, adjustments, tweaks of the frequencies, some minor, minor things. Um, the chords are clipping, but we have like an idea here and we're connecting it back there. So though it's simple, we have created structure. So let's give you a little rundown from drop, break and back into the drop. But I'm just going to play it from this part. <laughs> So cool stuff. Um, in the later videos, we're going to be adding more content and making it from like this mediocre, especially the break. It's nothing fancy, but with the time constraints we have, we have to create some motion. We got to keep things flowing. And so uh, I'm confident we can take this to a higher level. We just got to keep adding more and more and more. And that's with anything you guys do. So don't be concerned if you're putting in hours and hours upon hours in your work, because I've been in that situation and, uh, you know, choosing the right samples, choosing the right levels and effect here at like minus 30 dB or something at very low level. And we're probably going to be doing things like, you know, taming that chord a bit more, creating some more interest, maybe putting a top layer on top of the breakdown. It's not finished by any means, but you can see that here we've already created like a little break uh, section, a little clap chorus section, a little riser section. Super simple, but I just wanted to show you guys something that can be done. So guys, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit the like button, drop me a comment. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see on the side, because I'm still going to be making other videos, but we're going to be continuing this uh, every so often. Remember to stay subscribed, hit the notification bell. So you guys are alerted of my uploads. I got lots of juicy stuff in store for you guys, and I will see you guys very soon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and take it easy. Peace.